to a dilapidated old roundhouse in the center of the rail yard. There to meet one Doyle McCormick, the engineer and chief mechanical officer in charge of the train. Walking around the corner, I couldn't believe my eyes. There she was, bright, polished, and far bigger than you ever would imagine. The roundhouse was full of activity. Over on the side, a grubby-looking character in dirty overalls was trying to bore a hole through the side of a rail car with a power grinder. Inquiring where I might find Mr. McCormick, the guy shot me one of these looks. Mm. I am Doyle McCormick, he blustered, and who the f are you? Well, it wasn't long before I met the rest of the crew. Pat Tracy on the chisel hammer, Dick Yeager, who was in charge of the food, and the old man, Big Jack Wheelahan. What a great name for a railroad man. They had the main rods off the engine to refurbish the bearings and cylinders. I asked Doyle McCormick how the running gear worked. Well, there's another rod that goes on here, and then there's another rod that goes here, then there's another rod that goes here. I mean, there's all kinds of pieces to go on here yet. Yep, this was going to be an interesting shoot. Why, we hadn't been there five minutes before it started to rain. There's a little physical fact I like to, to describe about this locomotive. All of the parts on here that they're called combined reciprocating weight, which is the piston, the crosshead, portion of the main rod, weighs over 4,000 pounds. And at 80 miles an hour, that changes directions 11 times a second. So when you look out the window and you're going down the road, it's trying to tear itself apart. Yeah, these things go into the self-destruct mode as soon as you start to run them. I mean, they just fling themselves. On each wheel, of course, is a big counterweight that counteracts the centrifugal force of the rods on the other side of the wheel. And hopefully everything's in balance when you're going 80 miles an hour down the railroad. When he wasn't working on the daylight, Doyle was a regular engineer for Southern Pacific. And a good one, too. Uh, it's a job that, that I like. I come from a railroad family. My grandfather was a railroader. My father was a railroader. I had two brothers in the railroad. The railroad just comes naturally to me. I inherited the love of the railroad from my dad. A lot of tradition, isn't yeah. there? A lot of tradition. A lot of tradition. Yeah. You know, when I was growing up, like I say, my dad loved the railroad, and, and uh, I used to go with him when I was a kid, when he went to work, and I liked hanging around the railroad, and it just was natural for me to be a railroader then. Doyle ran diesel freights on the Portland to Eugene division and he had earned a certain irreverent reputation. Mr. McCormick's patience is inversely proportional to the length of time that he's been up. The longer he's up, the shorter his patience becomes. And, Say that. And it, 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 he approaches a raving maniac along about 9.30 in the evening, which I'm used to it, Jack's used to it, and so are most of the other guys. But he, he scared off several people because they really don't understand where he's coming from. And that's one of the things that makes this, this operation click is that we have been together so long that we understand each other and he can rant and rave and, and yell at you and all that. And you just go ahead and you do the job the way it needs to be done and you just keep on going. I like to think that we're a little bit more well-rounded than some of the, the foamers, I think, that are into this hobby, that all they know is railroads. They don't under recognize a good-looking woman when they see her. and They don't understand fine music, symphony music, or bluegrass, or jazz like Dick and I are into. Uh, Doyle likes country music, and I can get into some of that, too. But, you know, I think we're... Don't confuse the words country and music. Oil and water. It was easy to see these daylight railroad boys were a real hand to draw to. Well, it's always a good feeling after you've pounded your head against that thing for weeks and weeks and weeks and you finally get to fire it up and then she starts to come alive, she warms up. It's, it's sort of like giving birth, I guess. When you start the systems and she really comes to life, her heartbeat starts and she starts to breathe. It's, it's, it's always fun. Uh, that's one of the most enjoyable parts about running is when you bring her from a cold piece of iron to a living creature. And that is the closest man has ever come to creating life. Uh, this country was built by the railroads, and everybody remembers that. And railroads are an easy thing to like. Everybody likes trains. 
nice to watch it go by. I can remember it five years ago. We got the crew of the 4449 to take a short break and do a little reminiscing. Didn't cost anything. Money was tight and warm. And, uh, you know, you couldn't afford a Lionel train set, but you could stand by the tracks and watch the train go by. Well, you are old. The war? Yeah. 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 I can remember when the war was over. <laughs> That's the Vietnam War, right? No. Oh, the big war! The big war. WWII. <laughs> Talking about people who chase trains, what's the funniest thing you've ever seen with people? Up, 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 up. <laughs> right there, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Down in Florida, 1977. Long time ago. <laughs> we were running a trip for Amtrak, and we tripped the hot box detector, and we stopped in the middle of miles of orange groves. Well, Dick liked an orange the way he does. He decides it's time to pick a few oranges. So over into the orange grove he goes. Stand there by the tree and grabs his shirt and pulls it out. And he picks about four dozen oranges the size of his shirt. <laughs> so he inspected the train and we whistled off. I says, the fireman, I said, everybody up back there? And he turned to me and he had a real funny look on his face. He said, I think Dick's mooning the train. I said, what? <laughs> I went over to the other side of the cabin, looked back, and here was Dick down in the ditch. He'd run for the train. And he went down to the ditch, and when he started up, his pants did. <laughs> There's Dick bent over, not wanting to drop the oranges, <laughs> trying to pull his pants up at the same time. And the, the whole train, train, the whole train is going. I got a fire and I got a great big teapot full of water out here. And I take the fire and I make steam out of it. Lots of steam. You let the steam go through the cylinders. Instead of making a whistle, it pushes the engine back and forth because it's connected to the wheels out there. The more steam you put in there, the faster she goes. Ain't that wonderful? Spent his life on a passenger train in California. Retired. Over, we know a big clear block. Was retired in about 1957. Was donated to the city of Portland in 1958. Sat in a park neglected for 17 years till 1974. We got it out of the park for the Freedom Train. We used it on the Freedom Train throughout the whole United States. Came back to Portland and has been used on special occasions ever since. It was crude, but it's effective. <laughs> well, that's how you do it. Here was a pure picture of contentment. Doyle pointed at the speedometer, and I tried to follow. It read 60, but the way the engine was shaking, it felt like 90. It was like riding out a hurricane inside a spam can. Well, how about now?
wanted we get a lot of satisfaction. Yeah, that's what I said. As we approach the town of Eugene, Oregon, Doyle blew the 4449's Typhoon Air Horn, a warning device originally installed on the daylights to cut through California's dense coastal tule fog banks. Locomotives are like women, you know, they're, they're very beautiful and they're graceful. And that's why we call them she and her. But uh, you also like a woman in that if you don't treat them right, they'll make you the sorriest sucker ever walk the face of this earth. Being around this thing's like being married to a second woman, too. You know? It's like having two wives. They both demand an awful lot of your time. I may look old, but I'd be young at heart. <laughs> I may look young, but I'm old at heart. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.